Many centuries ago, back in the First Age, a portal called Worldgate was opened on Gilinor. This portal allowed creatures from different planets to enter the world of Gilinor. Many creatures came through the portal and saw the beautiful woodlands. So did the elves. These elves began to live in the rich forests of Isiftar, which was surrounded by the Arendar mountain range, and it soon became their homeland. Currently the knowledge of what happened to the elves in the first few ages is not known to us, but there are some books telling us about a large city that was built by the goddess, Seren. This city is gone, but there are reports of a big event that will happen sometime in the near future, which would reshape Turanen and also give us more understanding of the elves' history. The god was that engulfed the Third Age in terror, were completely avoided by the elves as they hid behind their mountain pass. They were told to do this by Seren herself. Guthix banished all the gods from Gilinor at the end of the God Wars, and so Saren was no longer there to lead the elves. So, after centuries of isolation from the rest of Gilinor, some of the elven people left Turanen. They found a land in chaos. Many of the races that had been dominant before the end of the God Wars were on the edge of extinction or had simply vanished. The Gnome City, which years ago had trade relations with the elves, was now little more than just a village. In this land of chaos, the elves built settlements and restored their trade relations with the gnomes that had survived the god wars. The humans at the time lived in tribes and were hostile towards the elves. After some time, all the tribes signed a peace treaty and their settlements lived in peace. Somewhere in that time, the elves also appointed Baxtorian as king and his empire covered a large portion of the continent known as Kendaren. In the year of 1929 of the Fourth Age, a messenger came to King Baxtorian and told him that the city of Prifthanas had fallen into a gruesome and bloody civil war with Lord Yorworth seizing control of the city. King Baxtorian sent scouts, and after a few weeks he took his army and travelled back to Turanen to liberate the city. King Baxtorian attacked the city of Prifthanas, but he was no match against Lord Yorworth, which fought with the power of a mysterious Dark Lord. After this battle, King Baxtorian learned that his kingdom in Kendaren had fallen and his queen, Glariel, was missing. King Baxtorian decided to finish his mission and he successfully rescued the elders from the other elven clans that were imprisoned in Prifthanas. After the mission, he went to Kendaren and searched for his beloved queen, but she was nowhere to be found. King Baxtorian lost the will to live and sealed himself inside Baxtorian Falls, hoping Queen Glariel would come back to him, but she never did and he presumably died inside that cave. After the elders were rescued, the city of Prifthanas suddenly disappeared. Lord Yorworth, along with several other Yorworth elves, were outside the city at the time. Lord Yorworth decided to set up a temporary elf camp over the land upon which Prifthanas once stood, stationing elves outside the city gates to guard its entrance, along with a military elf camp in northern Isifdar. The elves that followed King Baxtorian chose a new leader, and so Seridwin Kadan was appointed the leader of the remaining elven clans. The rebel elves were forced to make their homes in Isiftar as the city of Prifthanas was no more. As Lord Yorworth and his army ruthlessly pursued the rebel elves, these rebel elves were forced to constantly change their location and rebuild new homes elsewhere in the forests of Isiftar. After much fighting, the rebel elves created the village of Cleta and were able to fortify it. This village became a haven for the rebel elves and it soon became their base of operations. Then, many years later in the Fifth Age, the ruler of West Ardun, known as King Tyrus, went on a crusade into Rhiannon, presumably to help the rebel elves. The inhabitants of West Ardun began to hate their ruler, whom in their point of view had forsaken his own kingdom. On top of that, King Lathus, his brother, the ruler of East Ardun, blocked off West Ardun from the rest of the world, because according to him, there was a dangerous plague. King Lathus hired mourners that would cure these people, but in fact, these mourners were digging a secret tunnel to a temple that hadn't been accessed for many centuries. A particular mourner wrote a journal that proved most interesting. Here are some of the passages from that journal. I start this new journal as I start my new life. I leave behind all that I was as I take a stand for the elven race. It is my hope that we can at last find peace with our misguided brethren and return home. To stay here is to condemn ourselves to an eternity of chaos. To this end, we must each do all that we can for the greater good. The Death Guard is an old and honourable society and so I have enrolled. I have one more day in the city before I go for training. I was speaking to my brother Leston. He was telling me of the research he has been doing in the Undercity. He thinks he may have found the location of an old grand library. It is a shame his research will never amount to anything. No one will ever enter this place. The seals were placed on it over 2000 years ago by Saren herself. In this passage we can read that the mourners are actually called the Death Guard and have existed long before the plague. 
The Old Grand Library is a library that presumably resides under Prithanas, but we haven't seen any proof of it at this time. The induction to my new post was poor at best. I was not even assigned a bunk. The rest of the day was spent in a watchtower, occasionally getting attacked by pigeons. The humans are not so different as I thought they would be, although they live like animals. The watchtower that is mentioned in this passage is located next to West Ardun, so we can assume that some of the mourners that are actually in Ardun are elves. One of the slaves escaped and ran off down the southwest cavern today. He was found some hours later in a small crevice, rocking back and forth repeating over and over, No shadows get me. It looks like I will be the one to get to go look for these shadows. I just got my orders to take a team and investigate the tunnel. I am to be briefed in the morning. This was the last passage in the journal. Here we can read that the mourners have slaves. Could these be the inhabitants of West Ardun? This journal was found in front of the entrance to the Temple of Light, so we can assume that the author died there. The Temple of Light is an ancient structure built by the elves to protect the Death Altar. The Death Altar has existed before the elves even came to Gilinor in the First Age. It holds great power over death. These powers are contained by certain safeguards that were made by the ancient elves. These safeguards keep the shadow creatures that inhabit the Temple of Light inside the temple. A few years ago, King Lathus of East Ardun allowed the Death Guard, also known as the Mourners, entry to East Ardun. He would help them find the temple, and they would help him take Camelot back. Camelot was given to King Arthur by King Lathus' father, but King Lathus didn't agree to this decision, and he wanted it back. Meanwhile, some dwarves made an outpost in the Underground Pass, and found a way into the Temple of Light. The Death Guard, however, are afraid to enter the Underground Pass, because many of them died there in a huge battle. So the only way for them to enter the temple is by digging towards it, but this proved to be difficult. This was the lore behind the Elven questline so far. The new Song of the Elves quest will be released sometime in the summer, and there will be some more videos about what that quest will have to offer, and the city of Prifthanas. Hello guys! I hope you enjoyed the first part of the video, in which we covered all the lore behind Tyranwin that we know so far. I called it the lore behind Tyranwin so far, because in a few months the quest Song of the Elves will be released. This quest will presumably give us a much larger insight in the life and history of the elves. That's why I am planning to make a podcast in the near future, in which a runescape expert and me will be analyzing the city of Prifredanius, the quest requirements, and the gauntlet. The mods have already showed us a map of Prifredanius, and we will be comparing this map with the runescape free map. With this we can predict certain elven clans and their role in the city. The quest requirements will also play a huge role. These give us a feeling of what we will have to do in the quest. And maybe give us more insight in the story behind the Song of the Elves quest. We have also heard about a new PVM minigame, which is based on skilling. This minigame is a solo minigame. And we will be diving into the details and how it fits in the lore in that podcast. I am glad that my lore only channel has gotten so far already. And I don't want to introduce a whole different genre to the channel. So I need your guys feedback on what I'm going to say next. Would you guys mind if I talk about future quests and talk about the lore and storyline in those quests? The lore in those videos and in the podcast will not be confirmed but I will keep the current in-game lore in account and try to speculate within its boundaries. The goal of these quest analysis videos will be to get more people into the lore behind RuneScape and show the OSRS mods that the OSRS community wants more lore in the game. This will largely benefit the channel in the long run because if the team releases more lore and more backstories, I can make more videos covering it. I have a lot of ideas for the future and I'm really stoked to release those plans, but I'm still gonna yeah, flesh them out a little bit. It's a bit late, but thanks guys for the 5,000 subs. We already have 5,800, so it's going really fast. And guys, thank you for that. I will be sticking to my weekly schedule for the meantime i'm working hard to improve the scripts and my voice so guys bear with me uh there will be a couple of more guests and then i will come back guys here's to the tale thanks for watching this episode 
There are a lot more lore videos like this on the channel. Just check out the lore playlist in the description if you want to see more. Don't forget to like the video and share it around if you enjoyed it. We can get this genre of videos starting to grow and subscribe if you like the content. I hope you guys enjoyed and have a fantastic day. Guys, don't forget to check out Turtletail's channel. He voiced this episode and he has a Tiranwin only Ultimate Iron Man. So don't forget to check that series out. Again, thanks for watching and have a great day.